Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. Today we've got, uh, right before Christmas, the Saint Chamond Early Type Iron Mask Man, uh, which uh, what's the Iron Mask Man is the specific tank, but this is the uh, the heavy French heavy tank from World War One, built between 1918 or 1917 and 1918. Uh, obviously saw action late in the war, I believe. Uh, let's let's check its history, though. I'm not really sure too much on the background, so let's do a little bit of background history. The Saint Chamond was the first French heavy tank of the First World War, with 400 manufactured from April 1917 to July 1918. Born of the commercial rivalry existing with the makers of the Schneider CA-1 tank, the Saint Chamond was an underpowered and fundamentally inadequate design. Its principal weakness was the Caterpillar tracks. They were much too short in relation to the vehicle's length and heavy weight, 23 tons. Later models, however, attempted to rectify some of the tank's original flaws by installing wider and stronger track shoes, thicker frontal armor, and the more effective 75 MLE 1897 field gun. The St. Chamond tanks remained engaged in various actions until the late summer of 1918 belatedly becoming more effective since combat had moved out of the trenches and onto open ground. Eventually, however, the St. Chamond tanks were scheduled to be entirely replaced by imported British heavy tanks. Well, I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed that little bit of history on the tank. Let's go ahead and crack open the box, shall we? On the, let, uh, before we do that, on the side, we've got several uh, artworks here. We've got uh, one is the St. Chamond Phantomos uh, AS 31 1917, uh, the Saint Chamond uh, Chant Chant Chanticoot uh, AS 31 uh, La Force uh, 1917 La and, uh, and then they show on the side here they just have an over overview of some of the parts, and that's about it for the side work. So let's go ahead and open it up side art. Uh, right off the bat, you can see that it's got a very interesting one-piece hull arrangement. Um, let me go ahead and get this out of here. So you can see, um, crinkle, crinkle. You can see it's a, a one-piece, probably slide molded, I would assume, piece. So it's got the, it's got the front section or the rear section, front, the rear section, the rear section. Now here's the front here, uh, the sides, and uh, and the top already already in one piece. Um, seeing a little bit of a production issue there. Looks like some some almost looks like a slight burn mark, but I don't think any of the plastic's actually been damaged at all. It's just kind of a kind of a probably a point where maybe it was grabbed out or something as a piece. Uh, but very nice, very nice detail. Lots of nice little rivet points. Um, even got some little uh, sprue uh, spacer bits here that you're gonna have to remove, obviously, for some of the hatches. So uh, yeah, good. Uh, looks good on that one. The first sprue here is uh, lots of. Uh, whoa, that's a nice machine gun. Some some of the machine guns, uh, some of the springs, um, the uh, suspension bits. As you can see. Um, it's got a fairly kind of tra tractor-like suspension. Uh, it does have individual track lengths, and here they are. Looks like they're a two-piece or, uh, or a multi-piece arrangement with the tracks themselves and an interconnecting bit uh, for probably between between tracks. And then uh, another big sprue here. This one's got some of the front uh, plating on it and uh, lower, maybe lower. No, this is another part. Uh, and then some of the hatch work and so forth is also here. And again, there'll be some detailed photos at the end of this bit, so if you want to skip onto the photos, that's fine. If not, keep watching. There is a figure included. I didn't realize that. World War One figure. He's holding... I'm not sure what he's holding, actually. Lever, it looks like, of some kind. He's got a sidearm and a helmet. He's a multi-standing uh, figure. Multi-piece multi, multi standing figure, I was going to say. Uh, so again, some of the additional uh, front uh, armor on there, and the, and the uh, I believe this is probably the bottom of the tank here. And then the last piece is again more, um, essentially more parts of the, the hull structure. 
and detail parts. And it looks all looks very good. There's no flash. There's no you know discernible issues. Uh, sync marks almost sync marks almost non-existent. I was gonna say I can see a few on these larger pieces here, but no others. Uh, last bit is the instructions. There's a decal sheet here with some of those uh, aforementioned uh, schemes, the two different schemes it looks like they provide you with. Let's go ahead and open this up and take a look on the inside. So here's the manual printed in nice glossy, glossy manual covers, almost like a collectible. Um, thanks to Mr. Paul Legoff for providing help with this project. So it obviously had a good technical expert for this. And, uh, and it's basically straightforward, you know, it should be a pretty simple bit of, other than the suspension and the tracks, obviously, will be a bit of work, I would assume. But uh, there's a lot of to the suspension, obviously. But that's pretty much, I mean, a majority of the external parts of the hull should be go together really easily, I would imagine. There's that figure. You get a better look at him. Looks like he's got a gas mask option. That's probably what he's holding. It looks like he's holding up a rolled up map or some canvas or something. So as you can see, the tank has you know forward mounted machine guns, side mounted machine guns, and a front uh, forward gun. I hope you enjoyed the photos and the uh, unboxing of the St. Shamad. Obviously, we'll have this out for uh, a, a potentially a full build review or a build feature. And if you're interested in that, just let me know uh, over the holidays, and I will uh, definitely put your name in the in the in the mix for this. Uh, we've got lots of other kits too, so take a look at our sample sheet and uh, see if there's anything uh, you might be interested in. Uh, again, for reviewers, we're primarily looking for people with a little bit of experience doing this. We're we're not going to hand off a, a kit like this or any of our other more recent uh, items just to to any old person. But uh, obviously, if you've got some some past background in doing online reviews or taking photos, and you think you can you can uh, you can do the job well, then uh, we're obviously looking for good builders as well. Obviously, so we'll we'll kind of counterway uh, you know one with the other. If you're a really good builder but you don't have much experience in doing an online review, we can obviously help you out with that as well. All right. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. Don't forget you can. 
uh, like this feature uh, either on our site or on uh, YouTube if you're watching it on YouTube, and we appreciate uh, any uh, feedback and so forth that you're that we get. Thanks for watching. Thank you.